Welcome back to our beginner dog training series. My name is Jessica. I'm the Ferrari Family Coach. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. In this video of the beginner dog training series, we're on video six. We're going to be talking about potty training. Really quickly, before we get into potty training, I do want to remind you that this is part of the beginner dog training series. And if you haven't started from the beginning, there is a link in the description below to the playlist so you can start from the beginning and building communication, building that bond with your dog. Definitely recommend you checking out the full playlist. If you're returning to my channel, thank you so much for being here. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every single time I post a new video. So let's get right in to this video all about potty training. Whether you just brought home a new puppy or you maybe have adopted an older dog who just hasn't quite figured out what it means to go potty outside versus inside, then the number one thing you need to put in place to be effective with potty training is controlling the environment. If you give your puppy or dog full access to the whole house and you are not with them constantly, you are just asking for accidents to happen. So we definitely want to control access to their environment. That is going to be key here. I also want you to understand that potty training is not something that happens overnight. This may not be a very popular statement, but it is the truth. Depending on the dog and depending on your commitment to doing what it takes to potty train your dog, it can take weeks, sometimes up to months, for a dog to be fully potty trained. That's not to say that we will never, ever, ever again have accidents. They do sometimes happen, especially if your dog is overly excited about something or maybe they get sick and they're having some medical issues that need to be attended to. Accidents can happen even after you feel like your dog is fully potty trained. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. If you are really, really struggling and you just feel like your dog isn't getting the hang of this potty training thing, or maybe you've had potty training down and you're like, wait, what's happening? All of a sudden my dog is having accidents. Definitely want to check with your veterinarian to rule out any underlying medical issues that may be going on with your dog. The number one recommendation I see people on social media make, and many dog trainers will also make, is to crate train your dog to be effective at potty training. And while this can be a very useful tool for you if you are potty training, I want to caution you. Seriously, this is a huge, huge warning, okay? I want to caution you that it is an aid. It's not something that is going to take the place of you actively training with your dog and rewarding when they do what's appropriate. So, so many people, I actually have another video on my channel all about why you should not use a crate and I will link that in the description below. And don't get me wrong, I like crates, I use crates, but too many people use it as a, I don't wanna deal with my dog, so off they go in the crate. That is not what a crate is for. A crate is a safe space for your dog, and it takes a while to properly crate train your dog. So I do want to caution you that if you decide to use a crate, and you absolutely can use a crate, it is a safe place for your dog and not somewhere where you shove your dog away because you don't want to deal with them. And that may not be a very popular statement, but it is 100% the truth. So if you choose to use a crate, that is perfectly fine. If you choose not to use a crate, I am with you on this too. While I do think crate training is completely important and every dog should be crate trained for emergency situations, for travel or boarding situations, you should properly crate train your dog so they know and have this safe space where they can be and they aren't afraid of a crate. It is not an end all be all to where your dog should be going every day. So the important thing about what a crate is supposed to be is having a safe space for your dog. So if you choose not to use a crate, you still need a safe space. Now this can be uh, your kitchen, maybe a bathroom, maybe a section of your bedroom if you can easily contain it. And you can you can even set up a puppy playpen or an X-pen and that be your dog or puppy's safe space. That's completely fine. You are going to want to have a safe space for your dog so that you can 
have somewhere for them to go. You can have it lined with puppy pads if you want to and give them a place where they can go and play and have some time alone by themselves away from you. You're going to want this too because managing the environment is about you being with your dog. So when you are home, when you are with your dog, you are with your dog. When you are actively in the puppy training phase, we actually want to take their leash and keep you and your dog attached to one another. That way you are never so far away from your dog that you forget that you need to be going outside every 15, 20, or 30 minutes depending on the age of your dog. If you have a really young puppy, you are going to want to start out going outside every 15 to 20 minutes because you want to be able to catch your dog actually using the bathroom. And what do you want to do then? You want to throw them a party. You want to reward with treats. You want to um, praise them. You want to play with them. That way they associate going to the bathroom outside with a positive outcome. That's going to be the treats, the rewards, the party time, the play time. That is what is going to train your dog to go outside. And when you go outside, you don't want to, you, you want to be completely boring. So when you walk outside for, to take your dog to go potty, you want to walk to the space where you want your dog to go potty and you want to be as boring as humanly possible because you don't want to distract your dog from doing what they need to do, which is going potty. Give them a good 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, depending on the age of your dog and you'll start to learn your dog. Don't go out there real quick and when they haven't peed in a minute or two, you come right back in. Give them a good five or 10 minutes. Let them sniff around, figure out, listen, take that time to take in the environment because understand, the environment is a distraction for your dog. So they need time to smell around and figure out, okay, this is where I am and this is what's going on and this is a new smell here and this is a new smell here. Okay, cool. Now that they take all that in, they can start to listen to their body and their body is going to say, maybe they have to pee. Maybe they don't have to pee. I don't know. It depends on the time and the dog and it, there, there are so many factors, but give your dog the time to take in the environment, calm themselves, and then be able to listen to their body. So you need to give them a good five to 10 minutes to be able to do that. When you come back in, they are attached to your hip or they go in their safe place, whatever that may be. If it is a crate, if you do decide to properly crate train your dog, that's okay. A crate is not a place for punishment. That is just the number one thing I wanna get across. And again, I talked about that in the other video, which is linked in the description below. A crate is a safe space. So you can use a crate, that's fine. If you have like an X pen or a puppy play pen set up, that's fine too. Maybe you have the kitchen blocked off with a puppy gate, that's okay too. Your, your dog is either going to go in their safe space or they're going to be attached to you for the next 15, 20 minutes and then you're going to go outside and you're going to try again. And you are going to reward and throw a party when they go potty outside because that is how your dog is going to learn. The other key thing I want you to know is if your dog does have an accident, here's what you do. Absolutely nothing. You clean it up and you try again because what you have to understand is when you're potty training and your dog has an accident, that is not because your dog has done something wrong. Again, I'm gonna say something very unpopular. Your dog has not done something wrong, you've done something wrong because your dog should have been either attached to your hip or you taking them outside every 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how old. If you have an older dog, maybe you've adopted a dog that's five or six years old and they're still not potty trained, maybe you can go an hour, but you, I mean, set a timer on your phone if that's what you need to do. You need to be very diligent about taking your dog outside regularly, consistently, so that you can catch them when they actually need to pee, when they actually need to go potty, and reward it when they do go potty outside. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for these instances where you're, when your dog is going to naturally pee in the environment they are supposed to be peeing in and rewarding that. Another tip I wanna give you about potty training is that anytime your dog drinks some water or you have fed them a meal, you immediately wanna take them outside because these are really highly likely times that your dog is going to have to potty. And you wanna be able to catch that so that they can pee outside and you can reward it. The whole basis of potty training is to reward what you want to see in your dog. So if you can actually catch them at the right time when they have to pee, go outside, let them relieve themselves and reward that. Again, treats, 
party time, praise, give play time is amazing to do right after they've potty so that they know that they, they are associating these positive responses with what just happened, meaning they just went potty outside. The other really important times to take your dog out immediately is first thing when you wake up right before bed. Anytime that you may come home, your dog is going to be super excited. You immediately want to take them out to go potty. These are key times to take your dog out to potty. If you have a really young dog, you are going to also want to go out multiple times a night, depending on how old your dog is, one to four times a night. Another thing I highly encourage you to do is when you are outside and your dog does go potty outside like they're supposed to do, start adding in a cue word. And this could be something like potty, um, or go potty, something like that, your dog is going to start hearing those words and associating them with the behavior that they are doing, which is relieving themselves going potty. And on down the road, when your dog is older, they will be, you will be actually be able to say, okay, it's time to go potty. When you go outside, they can go ahead and relieve themselves because they know what you're asking of them. And then you can get about your walk or playtime or whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Okay, before we end this video, I do want to go over a couple of frequently asked questions about potty training. The first one is going to be, should I pad train my dog or train them to go outside? This is something that is going to be very personalized to you and your dog. If you have a very small dog and you live out in the country and your dog is not going to be able to go outside all of the time, maybe because of predators that are outside. I know this personally happened to me and my husband when I when I first met him. He had a tiny little chihuahua and the hawks out in the country were five, six times as big as she was and it just wasn't safe for her to be outside. So she was pad trained and that's okay. Uh, maybe you live in an apartment and you don't have full access to being outside any hour of the day, or maybe, or you live on, you know, the 10th floor of a building and it's just difficult to get downstairs all the time, then maybe you want to pad train. However, if you're, you know your dog is going to have full access to a yard and you would prefer for them to go outside and potty, I would just skip the pads altogether. While you can transition from pads to outdoor potty training, if you can skip it, go ahead. It's just one more thing that you're going to have to do. And if it's not necessary for you, then don't worry about it. If you do feel that it is necessary for you, go ahead and do it. You can eventually, when, when you no longer need the puppy pads and your dog is able to go outside, maybe you move, you will be able to train them again from puppy pads to going outside. So I don't want anyone to think that if you train your puppy pads, on puppy pads, they will only ever use puppy pads and will never go outside. It is totally possible. In fact, when my husband and I moved, um, our tiny little chihuahua that couldn't go outside because we lived in the country could, when we moved across the country, she then could go outside and she, we, so we just trained her to go outside and she loved it. She loved being outside. She took to it really quickly and easily and y you can do that too. So. It's completely up to whatever your circumstances are. So don't think that if you pad train, you'll never be able to go outside. That's not the case. Um, so do whatever you need to do to make you and your dog's situation the best possible. Again, I want to touch on what if your dog has an accident. The important thing to understand here is that it is your responsibility to be proactive and take your dog monitor, manage, and monitor their environment. They shouldn't have free roam of the house while you're potty training. They should be attached to you at the hip, very literally, with a leash to maybe your belt buckle, or maybe you need maybe you need to put on a belt so that you have something to clip the, the leash to while you're home. It is your responsibility to manage the environment, and it is your responsibility to be proactive and take your dog outside. Many, most, if not all dogs, will have tells Pay attention to your dog and you will start to learn their body language. Maybe they start sniffing really close, like normally they're, you know, looking all around and, oh my gosh, there's this cool thing over here, there's this cool thing over here, how about it come play with me, I want to do this. But when it's time that they need to go potty, their nose is on the ground and they're looking for a spot. Maybe their tail starts to hang a little bit. Maybe um, they start doing a little dance because they need to go outside. Your dog will, most likely, 
almost every dog I've seen has some sort of tell. You just need to pay attention to your dog to start learning those body language cues, letting you know it's time to go outside. So do not punish your dog ever because all you're going to do is let your dog know that you don't like their excrement. That's that's what your dog is thinking. So all that's going to happen is that they are going to be become fearful of you and try to hide it better from you. So do not do that. Do not punish them. Do not rub their noses in it. it this is going to backfire with you. I promise. Do not do it. All you need to do is clean it up. Take a deep breath. Let yourself know that you just need to do better next time. Pay attention to your dog. Stick to your potty training schedule, taking them out every 15 to 20 minutes. Once they start getting good at it, once you start learning each other's body language, once your communication starts getting better with each other, you can extend this period of time as your dog gets older. And it doesn't have to be every 15 to 20 minutes forever. You can start extending the period of time as your dog gets older and they have more bladder control. You, you and your dog need to feel each other out. So. Stick to your potty training schedule, clean up any messes, understand that, that you messed up, this was your responsibility, now it's time to clean it up, and you're going to do better next time. Another frequently asked question is about submissive or excited urination, and this is something that does happen very often, um, and a lot of dogs do grow out of it. It is an extensive subject, and there are a lot of different things to look for and a lot of different things you can do to help your dog overcome it. So I do want to, if you are interested, if you think your dog has uh, an issue with submissive or excited urination, there is going to be a link in the description below. I have a whole other video just on this topic, so definitely check out the link in the description to that video and let me know if you have any questions after you watch that. And uh, for the final question, for the final question and answer, um, I touched on this a little bit in the beginning of the video. If you feel like your dog is just not getting the hang of this potty training thing, or maybe you no, you like your dog has been potty trained and all of a sudden you're like, what's going on? You're having accidents again. Check with your veterinarian and make sure there are no underlying medical issues. Once you rule that out, either you're going to go to the vet and they're going to have maybe a urinary tract infection or something like that. A, a course of antibiotics will help your dog get over it and get back to normal and you'll see that they are going back to potty in the way they should have been. Um, or if there is nothing medically wrong and you're still seeing accidents, Let's we'll start back from the beginning. I mean, that is literally the number one thing that you can do is just start back from the beginning. Like you have just started potty training all over again and um, you'll see your dog is gonna catch on really, really quick. As long as you are remaining positive, you are remaining consistent. And all of those other, I have them, they're my seven miracle steps is what I call them, the seven canine commandments. Um, if you are new to that, if you've never heard of the seven canine commandments, if you've never heard me refer to the seven miracle steps, there is a link in the description below where you can get your copy of my book, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. They are really going to be key. Um, and I really encourage you to read that book before you start any training with your dog because putting these seven steps, these seven canine commandments, in place with your dog is really going to make or break training for you. So definitely check out the link in the description for that book. All right, guys, we made it through. We made it through video six of the beginner dog training series where we talked all about potty training. If you still have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to help answer them for you. Also, join the family, join the group. The link is in the description below. If you're having any issues, maybe um, maybe you're having issues or maybe you're having some wins and you just wanna share them, the group is the best way to do that. It is much more interactive. Join the group and I would love to see and hear about what's going on with you and your dog. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also, there's going to be another video popping up somewhere around here. I definitely recommend you checking that out. It's going to help build that bond between you and your dog. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.